Welcome fabricators. Okay, I was working on my next video and we're gonna dive a little more into Delta Lake and how we manage Delta in Microsoft Fabric. I realized there was something really important that I hadn't shown you. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't, but it's how you connect Azure Storage Explorer to Microsoft Fabric. And we're gonna cover why you wanna do that today on Tales from the Field. Wake up, wake up. today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, wake up. today's gonna be a good day. Azure Storage Explorer is an incredibly versatile tool. It allows you to be able to connect to multiple storage accounts, anything that a subscription connects to, to be able to manage it. You can manage POSIX permissions, ACLs, ACLs. Uh, you can also make sure that you can create blob containers, you can get storage keys, you can set permissions. You could also do a bulk import if you're forklifting data for the first time. Now, this could also be done via a pipeline. It has retry logic on it. So many wonderful things about this tool, but one of the great things and what we're gonna use it for is it allows us to be able to look at our file structures very closely as we're looking at Delta and our Delta files that we have in Microsoft Fabric. So what we're gonna do today is I'm going to show you how we connect it to our Microsoft Fabric Lakehouse and I'm going to connect on a per lake house basis. Now, the reason that I don't connect it to an overall one lake account is everything has a GUID that shows up as a folder, all of our data warehouses, all of our lake houses. So what I would encourage you to do at this point in time is when you're going to attach things, use a nice naming convention and attach the objects that you want to look at, that you want to manage. Well, that's enough talking about it. Let's get over to the demo and just show you how it works. I'm in my lake house and looking at my lake house, I can see my tables, I can see my files, but what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to use Storage Explorer to look at those at the root level. Now to do that, I need my URL because there's two important things I need from that. I can't show you my URL because it's got sensitive information in there, just like yours has sensitive information. You don't want to show that to other people, but this is essentially what our URL will look like. And there's two pieces of information we need to get. The first is this first piece. It's going to be a GUID and it's going to be our fabric tenant GUID. When we get this, the next thing what we need is our lake house GUID. Now, if you're using a data warehouse or if you want multiple data where or lake houses or data warehouses, you'll have to go and get those GUIDs uniquely to be able to drill down into these. I'm gonna go over to Storage Explorer and I'm going to add my specific lake house. It's gonna uh, show up under storage accounts under emulated and attached. And I'm going to go in the Connection Manager, select ADLS Gen 2 Container, sign in as OAuth 2. That's the only authentication we have. It's our Intra ID authentication. That's what we want to use. I'm going to click Next, and then I'm going to set my display name. Now, I'm going to entitle this exactly what it is, my lake house name, Baseball Lake House. I go and I look at my URL data, because remember, I'm going to need those two GUIDs. Now, I'm actually going to put the real stuff in here, so I'm going to blur that out. But the first one is my Fabric GUID, and the second is my Lake House. We go to onelike.dfs.fabric.microsoft.com, and then we add our tenant ID. So we're going to put our fabric tenant right there. We do a slash, and then what we need to do is go and get our lake house GUID. We put that in place, another slash, and we click next. This will let us know this is the connection we're connecting to. This is who we are. We go ahead and click next, and you'll see it immediately shows up. Now, if this is successful, we'll see files and tables. If you don't see that, you typed in something wrong. So now I can get rid of that information. I don't need it, we're attached, but I can look in here and I can see, here's my tables. This is exactly what I've got. It's actually alphabetically ordered, which is nice. And so if I go over and I do a comparison to my Fabric workspace, I can see here are my different tables. There's my author quotes, my all-star full, my baseball data, my shortcuts, you can see are locked. Uh, but if I want to, I can go and I can look at my additional data. So I'm going to go back to the tenant level and I go to my files now in my lake house and I can see these are the files that match up with the data that I can upload. Now let's look at tables. And for example, we're going to look at demo because we'll be doing this in our next video. We're going to go in here and we're going to look at this a little bit more closely. Look at the parquet files that are created and when we create a Delta table and how were they used. Okay, quick video today. But I hope this is useful to you because using Azure Storage Explorer to be able to access Microsoft Fabric 
is something that you're going to need to understand as an admin. There are places that you may want to use this. We're going to use this initially for learning, but you're going to see how this is also helpful in understanding how we manage our delta, especially within a lake house, and we make sure that we've got our maintenance correct. Now, sound off. You know where we want to keep this going, down in the comments. Uh, anything you didn't understand, anything that wasn't clear, thank you so much for joining us today on Tales from the Field. Be good to one another out there. Yeah. Set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do the aftermath of preparation. Good food.